This is Rant, the show that exposes the hypocrisies, the inconsistencies, and the flat-out blatant lies in the media. On tonight's show, we look at how your coffee choice could make you more of a man. Well, obviously not you. We ask why online news has to be just as trashy as the rest of the internet, plus plenty more things I'm taking way too seriously. But first, when a news story is too thin and reporters can't be stuffed getting actual experts to talk about it, or they want to justify their own point of view without abandoning their journalistic integrity, it's time to employ some 21st century Vox Pops, courtesy of Twitter. Our followers on Twitter also weighed in. Laura in Geneva wrote this. Jersey Mac asks, what would happen if everybody on Twitter repeated what Paul said? Would they arrest us all? A very new song, hello, so cute like you all. Twitter. Twitter's even worse than Vox Pops, if that concept's even possible. At least you had to get out of the office to do Vox Pops. You had to grab a camera and a sound gear and a crew. It was a whole production. You could even distinguish the really crazy people on site. But now, thanks to hashtags, the social media equivalent of, look at me, look at me, reporters have a million uninformed opinions at their fingertips. Why should I care what sexy girl 452 has to say about clear away zones? How does that make this issue more newsworthy? Well, let's check with Twitter. Mojo Johnson says tweets are too cool. I'd be using them for evs, lols. Terry Twister thinks, where can I get good coffee in Abbotsford? Help! An angry pants man says, wow, such a nice day in Adelaide. Wrong again, angry pants man. It's never a nice day in Adelaide. And it's not just news outlets doing this either. Have a look at this ad for, of all things, Christmas hampers, and check out the text scrolling through the screen. It's the best thing ever for my Christmas. For just a few dollars a week, I've got everything I need for my family's Christmas. That's amazing, Susie. It's all in here. It's so easy to order, and they deliver to my door. What is that? Hi, Mike, you are hot. Delivery day rocks. Top brands hassle-free. What are these supposed to be? Real text messages or live tweets from customers who love castle hampers? There's no Twitter address on screen. There's no mobile numbers. They just made them up. It's like when tabloids use an unnamed source to spell out what they really want to say. It's just a desperate attempt to make their product look cool. And there's only one thing worse than someone trying to be cool. And that's f***ing Christmas hampers in Adelaide. For overly semantic idiots like me, hey. the way... I said semantic. Oh. For overly semantic idiots like me, the last decade, the first of this century, has been quite challenging in terms of labelling it. What's the accepted grouping name? Is it the noughties, the 2000s, the ooze, the turn? You'd think after 10 years we'd have it right. Afraid not. The Ford O10 plate clearance is on. O10. Yes, thanks Ford for throwing that extra O in there. I would have instinctively thought you were referring to your 1910 models, or perhaps even your 2110 cars. O10. Who says O10? No one says O10. No one has ever said O10. Not even historians who talk in terms of centuries say O10. You don't say O09. So why O10? Why do it? To save time? You couldn't say 2010? That's not good enough? Too many syllables? What about 2010? That's one more syllable, O-10, 2010. One more syllable. 2010, you sound normal. O-10, you sound like a disappointed mother watching this show. Oh, 10. Coffee. It's the third most popular drink in the world, behind beer and, as far as I can tell, Jaeger bombs. But something's brewing in the world of coffee, and it's not just bad puns. Here's beverage correspondent Lee Zachariah with this exclusive report. coffee beans. You roast them, grind them, then you filter extremely hot but not boiling water through them to create a stimulating drink. Many people also add this. You simply add it to things that need milkifying such as warm drinks, cereal and cups of milk. But when mixed together they create a lethal combination that could threaten your very manhood. A latte liberal. Latte liberals. Latte drinking. Latte drinking. The latte sipping liberals. Yes, if you combine coffee and milk in just the right ratio, you will turn into a lefty elitist completely out of touch with reality. So what is it about this drink that has such a powerful political effect? Here at Rand Labs, we've been studying the ratio of coffee to milk to discover the secret combinations. 
We tested short blacks, long blacks, macchiatos, but nothing turned our test subjects into left-leaning pinkos. We thought we came close with the cappuccino, but it turned out we were wrong all along. It had nothing to do with coffee to milk ratio. Recently, advertisers have decided that iced coffee is the manliest drink in existence. Logos explode in violent outbursts. Voiceovers scream at us like somebody just set fire to Jimmy Barnes' vocal cords. Bring it on! Temperature was the key. The difference of only a few degrees could turn you into either the bastion of blokiness or Boy George. This is Dazza. He's a carpenter. His hobbies include being heterosexual, and he's a lifelong follower of football team. Dazza is drinking a specially chilled coffee currently sitting at 5 degrees Celsius. Note the blue singlet, the flannel shirt, the Akadaka tattoo. Now let's see what happens when we turn up the heat. Immediately the effects become clear. Dazza is now Darren. His tattoo is the Chinese symbol for books. He's still wearing the flannel shirt, but it now costs $500 and comes from Milan. From this evidence, we were able to extrapolate further extremes based on the mathematical principle of slippery slopes. If the media is to be believed, then a frozen block of coffee should turn Dazza into this. Whereas boiling the coffee away until it becomes wisps of vapour would turn Dazza into some sort of cross between Karl Marx and Tinkerbell. If you don't want your men turning into giant green killing machines or homosexual communists, please keep your coffee at room temperature. So, do you want to go get a coffee? Sure, just let me get my thermometer. Too many rants. Only enough time to cover them superficially. It's quad rant. All right, number one. Big Day Out Music Festival has decided to go green and offset their carbon footprint by planting trees. Not just any trees though. According to the press release, they're planting trees that produce oxygen and capture carbon using a sophisticated model developed collaboratively by several leading research agencies. Let me change my textbook. Photosynthesis was invented by scientists specifically for the big day out. That, that must be why they always program the vines. <laughs> Next up, the ashes. We lost. Again, who's to blame? I think the problem's at a real grassroots level. In this Vodafone ad, John from Sydney, who, who is of course a real person, reckons his nan could bowl out Shane Watson. And whack! <laughs> yes, good one, Shane. You really showed that little old lady who's boss. But according to Law 34 of the Laws of Cricket, intentionally hitting the ball twice, if not protecting your wicket, is actually out. So yes, technically, Nan did bowl you out. Maybe when the ashes next come round, you'll spend less time doing commercials and more time learning the f***ing rules. Next, a subject I'm eminently qualified to give an opinion on, feminine hygiene products. Specifically, Libra invisible pads with wings. See, the girlfriend asks her boyfriend to grab her a pad, but he doesn't know which one. No, oh, it's this one, silly, she says, because this one is shaped to fit, so it works better. Then why do you still have the other ones? Obviously, they're so inferior, you could never dream of ever using them when you've got these amazing ones, so why keep them? Are there times when you want your pad to not work as well as the good ones? Or is it just so you can keep being condescending to your boyfriend? To both of those options, I say, stop it! And finally, there wouldn't be an episode of Rant without either ripping into a current affair or Today Tonight. And tonight, it's... Today Tonight. Oh, excuse me. I mean, Today Tonight, Melbourne's voice. Because Today Tonight is committed to bringing Melburnians stories specific to Melbourne. Melbourne neighbourhoods trashed, supermarkets facing fines. Oh, Melburnians, doesn't that make you all warm and fuzzy inside? Make you feel good? Make you feel loved? Well, I got news for you. Today, tonight is cheating on you. You thought you were exclusive? They're not just Melbourne's voice. Sydney neighbourhoods trashed, supermarkets facing fines. Queensland neighbourhoods trashed, supermarkets facing fines. On Sevens Today Tonight. Sevens Today Tonight. Sevens Today Tonight. Matthew White, you dirty slut. If Australian Idol has taught us anything, and it has, 
It's that what the people vote for isn't necessarily what's best. Case in point, The Age Online, whose news department is apparently no longer defined by, well, news. Instead, it all comes down to clicks. The more people click on a story, the more time and resources The Age will then devote to that particular topic, regardless of its worth as news. So celebrities, Facebook, sex, this is the new legitimate news online from what was once one of the greatest news publications in the world, a benchmark of journalism. Our newspapers that are also online correspondent Tegan Higginbotham has more. Tegan, who is responsible for this? I am. What? You? You're doing the clicking. I am because I love it. Bikini photos, quiche only diet, plastic surgery for pets. Give it to me till I can't take no more and trust me, that will be never. For example, today, I read a story about a man who lives solely off of jam sandwiches. And I just cannot tell you how happy that article made me feel. It's jam sandwich. Why would that make you happy? Because now I don't feel so alone. Look, I, I, I'm well aware that the age used to be the lobster thermidor provencal at Doyle's. But now it's more of a four and 20 pie. Sure, it's full of questionable content from unknown sources, but it just tastes so damn good. Actually, I think the age online is kind of beyond a meat pie now. I think it's more of a can of condensed milk being chugged by a fat guy jerking off to two and a half men. You're splitting hairs. I know where to find legitimate news. It's being printed on paper every single day. Or I can just scroll down to the world section. But surely the age has a responsibility to all its readers, print and online, to be publishing actual newsworthy content instead of populist drivel. Example, today's top online story is Ruby Rose and Josh Thomas, strippers, bubbles, tweeters and troubles. I think that sounds highly informative. I'm fully aware that you'll find more titties on the front page of The Age Online than Shane Warne will ever see in a lifetime of text. And sure, The Age is pandering to people, but if you stop reading the crap, it'll stop being published. Problem solved. But what if there are too many people out there who want the crap? You mean people like me? I mean people like you. Look, if we want celebrities and breasts and celebrities with breasts, then why not just give it to us? It doesn't mean that we can't be keeping up to date with current affairs at the same time. Like this. I never would have known about Haiti if it wasn't for this picture of Kim Kardashian. Yes, well, yes, that was a terrible earthquake. They had an earthquake? Yes, thank you, Tegan. Tegan Higgin, both in there. Oh thank my you. God, is Kim's butt okay? Yes. Somebody, is Kim's butt okay? Can, can, can get on the internet, I need answers! Time for one of our regular segments on Rant now. It's time to award the very prestigious and not at all lame Rant Ribbon. The Rant Ribbon goes to our favourite rant of the week. Something that's really made us laugh because it's really made us angry. And tonight's winner is... Dettol for their no-touch hand wash system. You see, Dettol are concerned that your soap pump can harbour hundreds of bacteria, so they've invented an automatic soap dispenser, so you no longer have to touch the dirty, germy pump itself. Which would be great if you washed your hands in reverse order. You see, you use the pump first and then you wash your hands. Who cares if the pump's got germs on it? You don't wash your hands first and then use the soap pump and rub it all over you. It's useless. So, congratulations, Dettol. Here is your rant ribbon. Although, technically, we should have given it to you before you made the ad. Have you washed your hands? And now, from the biting the hand that feeds us department, even before we go to series, because we're just that ungrateful, it's TEN's revolutionary new news lineup, featuring... An Australian first, 6pm with George Negus. But what is the Australian first? Having George Negus appear on a show at 6pm? He did George Negus tonight at the ABC at 6.30. That could be it. That's a bit thin to hang a promo on, though. Is it having George Negus on 10? He's been on 7pm Project quite a bit. That can't be it. Is it having a show called 6pm with George Negus? You can't call that an Australian first. You can say that about every show, and not even every new show. An Australian first, episode 6081 of Neighbours. So what is it? What's the Australian first? You can't just say that... 
It's this, isn't it? An Australian first. We're not showing The Simpsons at six o'clock anymore. Finally tonight, end credits. Well, obviously, the final thing tonight will be end credits, our end credits, but I want to talk about end credits. And what's better, working on a show and not getting credit or being credited like this? <laughs> and that's not the worst of it. In fact, I'll see your super fast credits and I'll raise you super fast and super small. Season premieres don't get any better than this. Oh, out there. See, now that is pathetic. Just a complete disregard for the hardworking souls who toil day and night for little more than an above average wage just to make room for some lame promo. You know who it is? It's those egotistical fat cats on the top floor. They get all the credit. They're the ones pushing down on the little man, holding us back. Till next week, rant over! Coming up on 11, more shows from your childhood that haven't aged well. Now shown in the incorrect ratio. That's next on 11.